Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video I'll show you how I painted these robes using this awesome model from Gates of Nilheim as my example. This is part of a mini-series where I'm going through how to paint skin tones, robes, furs and metals, and it's aimed at beginners who want to go up to the next level from contrast paints. The model is already primed, and I used the surface primer Panzer Grey, and then went over with a dry brush of white paint, and that's going to bring out all the details of the models and help us with our tones. Let's get right into it then, and the goal with this video is to just use a few paints. We're going to use four altogether to achieve some nice results. So we're going to go with a Shabti Bone, Mournfang Brown, these are both with the Citadel. Then we're going to use a shade. This is Citadel Colour Shade Agrax Earth Shade. I'm sure you've heard of this if you've been painting models now. We're going to be doing some mixing and combining the different colours together. And then I'm going to use my favourite white paint, which is the Two Thin Coats White Star by Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy. This is the brush we'll use, the Army Painter Wargamer Regiment brush. I've been using this a lot lately and I'm really happy with it. It's a nice size, you can get a good point to it and all round very reliable brush. I'll put links to all this down in the description by the way. I'll also use the Army Painter Wet Palette and you may remember this if you've seen the skin tone video I did. But I'm going to freshen this up with a new sheet in there and a bit more water and we're good to go. Let's begin then with a Shabti Bone, the layer paint, and I'm going to mix one part paint to one part water and keep an eye on the palette on the right hand side and you can see the different colours that we'll be using at each stage. Now I'm going over this with a nice thin coat and just picking out the inner smock, I guess you could call it, and then we'll do this in a cream colour and then we'll do the outer robe in a dark brown. So you're going to get to see two different versions in this video. And so I'm going to go all over this now. Some areas you can be a bit rougher and a bit quicker, but taking my time not to go over into any of the other areas I want to paint dark brown later on. And there we go, that's one coat. We're going to let that dry completely and we'll come back to it and give another coat later on. But while that's drying, let's grab the Mournfang Brown, another base paint by Citadel. And the same thing, I'm going to mix this with one part paint to one part water and a nice even coat all over the area that I want to be this dark, rich brown. It's definitely worth mixing your paints with water like this. You get a nice even finish. And this is a bit different to contrast paints because with contrast paints, I would just use it straight out of the bottle. But with all these kind of layer paints and base paints, really good idea. Water them down, do a couple of coats and just take your time. It's not gonna be as quick for sure as contrast paints or speed paints, but I think the result, it's a different look and it's worth taking your time and trying out new techniques like this. I really enjoy painting with these layers and just trying to do it with as few paints as possible, I think is a nice challenge. But there we go, I've done that coat of brown now and that's quite a rich paint. It's almost covered what we can see underneath there. Now let's have a look at what happens when we do another coat. So each of the colours now, I've got two coats over them. Again, water down one part paint to one part water and that's a nice, rich, smooth coat. Now when that's completely dry, it's time to add some shade. And I've gone for Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm just going to give one even coat over the brown area and the Ashabti bone area as well. These shades are going to take a little bit longer to dry than a regular paint, and even a little bit longer than a contrast paint will, so you've certainly got time to move it around the model. But with so many little folds and areas here for it to pull in, you just got to be careful you don't get too much paint in any area. So use your brush to push and pull that shade around, make sure it settles in the areas where you want it to. And if you've got too much on the brush, then and you put too much on the model, you can simply just wipe away the excess paint on a kitchen towel off of your brush, and then use that brush to suck the paint back up. And I put a little bit too much on here. It's also maybe a little bit dark for this cream. I think I could have toned it down a bit, but it worked out okay in the end, and I think it's good just to not have to buy lots of different paints. Of course, you could thin this down a little bit, and so it's not quite as dark, but I just went with it. Even though it was looking a little bit dark here, I just trusted the process, and later on, you'll see it kind of adds a little bit of character and grittiness to the model. So there we are, we've covered that all over now, getting right in those recesses, and then we're going to let that dry completely. And this is the effect you're looking for. So you can see where it's pulled in the deepest crevices, but that's where we're going to get the darker shadows anyway. Now we go back to our original colours. I'm going to get the Ashabti bone. And now what I'm going to do is paint down the main areas of the folds where they're going to catch the light. But I'm going to try and keep that Agrax earth shade in the recesses. 
and that will give us a nice deep shadow and a real nice contrast between the shade and the highlight. So I'm just going over the main folds here and if you can see in the bottom left I've gone a little bit too dark with the shade so I can just tidy that up with the Ashabti bone now and so I can just go over that, paint it in and if you need to do two coats of this then let it dry and then add another coat over the top. And so here you can see it's just starting to come together now. We can just see those lines of shade coming through, but the big areas and the main folds that are going to catch the light, they're going to be painted back with the Ashabti bone. That's a little bit neater now. It doesn't look quite as harsh. And you can see around the back, we've still got to do all the brown as well. But let's stick with the cream robes. And I'm going to grab the white paint now, and I'm going to add a little bit of that to my palette, and then I'm going to mix that with the Shabti bones. And I do this again with a bit of water on my brush, mix the paints together, and you'll start seeing it come together now. A little bit too light that for the mid-tone. So I've grabbed a little bit more of the Shabti bone from the pot and I'm going to mix that in and then you can have a good look at the difference in the colours on the palette here from the original to the mid-tone and then we're going to get a little bit lighter at the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll clean my brush off at this stage once I've got the colour right, go back in, load the brush up and then twist it so I get a nice point on the bristles and that's going to help me with all the details. Now all we're going to do is go over all the areas we've already painted with the Shabti bone, but not quite as much. So we're just going to start easing up a bit now, making these lines a little bit thinner as we go. So this is the mid-tone, we've still got a highlight to come, and that highlight will be even thinner still. And this is going to give us the shade, the base, the mid-tone, and then the highlight. And that really sums up this style of painting. So it's a little bit more in depth and contrast paint, but also it's not as much as trying to blend in the different layers. So it's almost a bit cartoony, a bit comic book style. And I like that. I think it's a really nice way to paint. And it's a nice happy medium between contrast paint, which is really fast, and then the blending, which is really slow. So if you want something a little bit in between that leaves a real nice effect, then I think this is a good way to go and something worth trying out and practicing. And these models from Gates of Nilheim have been perfect for me to get to learn this technique and give it a go, as there's so many nice shapes and contours in there. The texture of the model really does the work for me. But here we go now. I'm going for a little bit lighter now. And so I'm going to clean my brush off again, go in, twist the bristles in the paint so I get a nice point to my brush. And then now I've got, I've got as much paint on the brush here either. I've still watered it down, uh, but I haven't got as much. And that means I've got a little bit more control about the area. And you can see I'm having to go in and out quite a bit, always twisting the bristles and then just really taking my time to get little neat lines. And this is just a case of practicing. I certainly haven't got anywhere near as good as I should be, but really happy with that. Again, that shade is quite dark coming through. So it's a little bit abrupt, but when it's on the table, you won't notice. Okay, now I'm going to go for the brown cloak and I'm going to start with that Mornfang brown again. And it's the same process. Just pick out the main most raised areas and give that a nice coat of paint and this looks really different now this looks like a big contrast between the shade and the actual Mornfang brown so you wouldn't think this was the original paint looking at it here but just trust it go with the process and by the time it dries it's going to calm down a little bit and kind of blend in a bit more it's not going to be quite as defined and here you can see that that's dried now and it's not quite as, as harsh as it looked a moment ago, but you can still see the shade coming through in the recesses. Right, now I'm going to add some Ashabdi bone to that Mornfang brown and you can see the colour on the right hand side on the palette. It's much lighter and this is going to be our mid-tone again. So just go over all those areas just like we did with the cream, but we're going to do the lines a little bit thinner. Make sure you move the model rather than yourself so you've got lots of control. I like to keep my arms on the table so I'm not shaking at all and then I've got a little bit more control. I made a bit of a mistake there. I'll show you how I just cover that up later on. But you could go back to the colour before. So I could go back to Mornfang Brown there if I wanted to and then go over it again. But I'll just tidy it up with this mix of the two paints here. And so again, it looks kind of stripey at the moment but it'll dry a little bit darker but just picking out all those areas, moving that model around, and let's tidy that up now. So what I'll do is I'll just block in a little bit. It doesn't really matter. I can go over that and then make that into a nice tidy shape and then move in the model there. So I've got lots of control to go up the side of the fold there. Now we'll start to pick out all the details of the hood 
and then these are going to be the areas that are going to get the most light so you find these would be the areas you go a little bit thicker when you do this technique. Right, that's where we're at now. We've got the two different colours going on the back. We still need one highlight on the dark brown cloak. So let's do that now. Rather than adding some white to this, I'm just going to mix in a bit more of that of Shabti Bone and white mix and then add enough of the Mournfang Brown until I'm happy with the highlight. It doesn't have to be super bright. You can see the difference between the three colours we've used so far. So we can go a little bit darker still as well. But this is all personal preference, just using your eye to guess how dark or how light it should be. But there we go. You can see there's a clear difference there. And again, the palette on the right should give you an idea. For this final highlight stage, it's just a case of picking out the areas that are going to get the most light, going thinner again with that line, but I'm being a bit bolder on the uppermost part because I think a lot of the light is going to hit that area. But as I go down further with the cloak, I'm going a little bit thinner. And then I'm also using the side of my brush just to catch the very sharp edges. So that's really helpful. But here I'm using the tip and you can see it's quite a thin line. I haven't got the skill to make this dead neat yet. I've got a lot of practice to do yet and a long way to go. It's all about practice, giving it a go, not being scared in case it goes wrong. I mean, the worst thing you can do is make a mistake and have to paint it again. It's just a plastic model after all. So don't worry about it. Just try something different and don't be scared if it all goes wrong, because often you can get some really cool lessons from that. But there we are. That's it. That's all painted up now. I'm going to let this dry completely and then we can have a look at it finished. So here it is. This is dried. And although it's a little bit dark in those recesses, a little bit splotchy at the bottom, I'm really happy with this. By the time it's on the table, it's going to be two, three feet away. And all those different colours are going to work nicely to create a really cool effect. So always remember that if you're not painting for prizes, you're just painting for the tabletop. The model is always going to be a fair distance away. I've made a similar video where I paint the skin on Frida from Gates of Nilheim. So that video is up on the channel already if you'd like to check it out. And in the meantime, if you want to see how I primed using the surface primer and a brush, check out that video. I'll link at the end of this one. Here's a lineup of some of those models that I've painted and finished, got them all based and everything. So really happy with how these turned out. And the textures on these models were just great to practice this technique with. And I've learned a lot and hopefully I can apply that to my next set of models. You can also see how I painted Bjorn the Viking all the way through. So I did every element in that one video. And I've also done an unboxing of the prototype if you want to find out more about the game and a demo let's play where I do a slow guided playthrough just to give you an idea of one of the tutorial scenarios and how the game plays. And if you want to find out even more, head over to Gates of Nilheim on GameFound. It's live at the moment. It's got, what, nine days left to go as I'm making this video. It's had a fantastic start and it'd be great if we can all go there and help support it and unlock some of those new add-ons. So that'd be awesome. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did like it, it'd be great if you hit the like button. Leave a comment as well. Let me know what you think about this simple technique. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.